Welcome, dear friends, and let me regale you with a tale of redemption, heroism, and the power of love to heal even the most shattered of souls. Enjoy the story. The rusty gates of the Illinois State Penitentiary groaned open, and John Doe emerged, squinting as the harsh sunlight assaulted his eyes. He sucked in a deep breath, relishing the sweet taste of freedom after five long years locked up for a tragic accident he never meant to cause. Slinging his meager possessions over his shoulder, John set off down the dusty road, the towering prison walls receding behind him with each step. The rumble of a train in the distance stirred memories of a childhood dream cruelly crushed. All he'd ever wanted was to be a conductor, but that hope died the day a terrible crash claimed his mother's life and stole his voice. John's mind drifted back to that fateful day five years ago. He'd been working as a truck driver, a job he could do despite the muteness that had plagued him since the accident. He'd tried to warn the mechanic about the faulty brakes, frantically scribbling notes and gesturing, but the man had brushed him off with a sneer. Quit your mumbling. I can't understand a damn word. Hours later, John had been barreling down the highway in the massive 18-wheeler, struggling in vain to slow the behemoth as it hurtled towards a line of cars. Metal crumpled like tissue paper, and glass exploded as he plowed into the other vehicles, sending bodies flying. In the courtroom, the mechanic had shrugged and said John's mumbling made no sense. The judge had slammed the gavel, condemning John to rot in prison for reckless driving. No one cared that he desperately tried to prevent the tragedy. A cloud of dust jolted John back to the present, as a sleek sports car screeched to a halt beside him. The tinted window rolled down to reveal a young woman caked in heavy makeup. Hey, handsome, can I borrow your phone? Mine's dead. John shook his head and pointed to his throat, trying to indicate his inability to speak. The woman let out a tinkling laugh. Not much of a talker, huh? Your loss. She slammed the gas and sped off, leaving John in a choking cloud of dust and exhaust. He caught a glimpse of the license plate. Esweista C. Classy. Coughing, John continued his trek, following the winding railroad tracks towards the distant city skyline. A piercing train whistle cut through the air. Shielding his eyes from the glare, John spotted the sports car stopped dead on the tracks up ahead. The woman slumped over the steering wheel. He started running. The train bore down on the crossing, brakes screeching as it tried to stop in time. John reached the car and yanked open the door. The woman was out cold, reeking of booze and vomit. John grabbed her and pulled with all his strength, muscles straining. At the last second, he managed to drag her limp body clear of the tracks just as the train plowed into the car with a sickening crunch of metal. The woman began to stir, makeup smeared across her face, as John set her down in the grass nearby. Fiery debris rained down around them. John tried to shield her when a chunk of twisted metal struck his head with a sickening thud. The last thing he saw as darkness closed in was the woman's eyes fluttering open in confusion. Beep, beep, beep! The steady pulse of a heart monitor roused John. His head throbbed and his mouth was as dry as sandpaper. Vision still blurry, he could just make out the woman from the tracks bursting into his hospital room. Her caked-on makeup had been replaced by a smattering of cute freckles. Oh my God, you're awake, she squealed, rushing to his bedside. I can't believe you saved my life. The doctor said I could have died. John blinked at her, still disoriented. He pointed to his throat and shook his head. The woman's eyes widened. You can't talk? Shit, I'm so sorry. I was such a bitch earlier. I'm Stacy, by the way. Stacy Vanderbilt. She smiled sheepishly. I guess I owe you an explanation for why I was passed out on the train tracks like that. I'm diabetic, and if I don't take my insulin, I can just conk out. Whoever spiked my drink at the club last night probably didn't know that. John's eyes widened in alarm. He grabbed the notepad and pen on the bedside table and scribbled, Spiked drink? Stacy waved a manicured hand dismissively. Oh, don't worry about it. Probably just some asshole trying to cop a feel. Joke's on them. My daddy will destroy anyone who messes with me. Speaking of, she glanced over her shoulder as two men strode into the room, a distinguished older gentleman in an impeccable suit and a doctor with a stethoscope around his neck. Daddy! Stacy jumped up and threw her arms around the suited man. 
Mr. Vanderbilt patted his daughter's back. I came as soon as I heard, Pumpkin. You had quite an ordeal. He turned to John with a grateful smile. And you must be the hero who saved my little girl. John, is it? I can't thank you enough, son. As the doctor examined John, Mr. Vanderbilt pulled him aside, his jovial expression turning grave. Doc, I need you to run a full talk screen on Stacy and keep this quiet. I have a bad feeling that drink was spiked by someone close to us. Someone who wants my daughter out of the picture, if you catch my drift. The doctor nodded solemnly as Mr. Vanderbilt's eyes flicked to his opulent wedding ring. My wife Vivian is, well, let's just say she enjoys the lifestyle my money provides, but perhaps not the baggage of a stepdaughter, especially since we haven't been able to have kids of our own. I pray I'm wrong, but... Over the next few weeks, Stacy was a constant whirlwind presence at John's bedside as he recovered. She chattered incessantly, seemingly enjoying the fact that he was a captive audience. Ugh, hospital food is the worst, she declared one day, waving a spoonful of green jello. What I wouldn't give for a juicy In-N-Out burger right now. John smiled and shook his head, then grabbed his ever-present notepad. Those things will kill you faster than any train, he wrote, giving her a mock stern look. Stacy stuck out her tongue. Yeah, yeah, I know. But after a near-death experience, I think I'm entitled to a little indulgence. Her expression softened. I really don't know how to thank you, John. You saved my life. Literally. John ducked his head, embarrassed by the praise. He shrugged and wrote, Anyone would have done the same. Bullshit! Stacy laughed. Most people would have just gawked and taken a video for social media. But not you. You're like a real hero. She reached out and squeezed his hand, her touch electric. John felt a flutter in his chest that had nothing to do with his injuries. Get a grip, he chastised himself. A girl like her would never go for an ex-con mute like you. As John scribbled down his story for the doctors, hoping they could find a way to restore his voice, Mr. Vanderbilt took him aside. Son, what happened to you is a travesty of justice. I've got my legal team looking into your case. We'll get your conviction overturned and your name cleared. Mark my words. John could only nod, overwhelmed with gratitude, as the older man clapped him on the shoulder. And of course, you'll be handsomely compensated for saving my daughter. Whatever you need, medical care, a place to stay, a job, consider it done. I take care of my own. True to his word, Mr. Vanderbilt set John up in a swanky penthouse apartment and arranged for top-notch speech therapy. Weeks passed in a blur of grueling medical treatments and visits from the effervescent Stacy. John felt like he was in a dream, but the nightmare wasn't over yet. One sunny afternoon, as John and Stacy strolled through the park, she caught sight of an ice cream truck and lit up. Ooh, I know it's naughty, but I'm totally getting a double scoop of mint chip. She started to dash across the street towards the truck, heedless of the traffic. Out of the corner of his eye, John spotted a flash of red, his blood ran cold as he recognized the sleek sports car gunning straight towards an oblivious Stacy, her stepmother Vivian's furious face just visible behind the wheel. Time seemed to slow. John's paralyzed vocal cords strained as a guttural cry ripped from his throat. Stacy, no! Stacy whirled around, jaw dropping in shock at the sound of John's voice. He lunged forward and shoved her out of the way with all his strength, just as the car slammed into him, his body crumpled like a rag doll, bone shattering on impact as he flew through the air, searing pain, screaming, sirens, the wail of an ambulance. John drifted in and out of consciousness, Stacy's terrified face swimming above him. John, oh God, John, please don't die. Tears streamed down her cheeks, her voice fading as the world went black. Beep, beep, beep. The familiar rhythm of the heart monitor penetrated the haze of morphine. John struggled to open his eyes, every inch of his body radiating agony. Oh, thank God he's waking up. Stacy's tearful voice cut through the fog. I thought, I thought I'd lost you. Stacy. John's voice was hoarse from disuse, little more than a whisper. Are you okay? Stacy let out a strangled laugh. Am I okay? You just saved my life again, you big dumb hero. And you're talking. Memories rushed back. The car, the impact, the scream torn from his once silent throat. 
John reached out a trembling hand to cup Stacy's tear-streaked face. I guess I just needed the right motivation. Mr. Vanderbilt burst into the room, eyes wild. Stacy, thank God you're all right. The police arrested Vivian. She's saying it was an accident, that she lost control of the car, but security cameras don't lie. She aimed right for you, my own wife. He sank into a chair, head in his hands. Stacy rushed to embrace her father. I'm okay, Daddy. Thanks to John, again. The older man raised his head, meeting John's eyes. Son, I don't know how I can ever repay you. You saved my daughter's life twice now, and it seems like you got your voice back in the process. John managed a weak smile. Just happy. I could help, sir. The road to recovery was long and painful, but John faced it with a newfound determination, buoyed by Stacy's constant presence at his side. Mr. Vanderbilt's crack legal team made quick work of overturning John's unjust conviction and securing a hefty settlement from the trucking company. Months later, John stood on a windswept beach at sunset, Stacy's small hand entwined with his. The crash had left him with a limp and a few new scars, but he'd never felt stronger. He turned to face the woman he loved, pulse pounding as he dropped to one knee in the sand. Stacy Vanderbilt, you brought me back to life in every possible sense. I never want to spend another day without you. Will you marry me? Tears sparkled in Stacy's eyes as she tackled him to the ground in a fierce hug. Yes, you big dummy. Of course I'll marry you. Mr. Vanderbilt beamed as he watched the happy couple, all the strife and heartache of the past year fading away. He'd give anything to ensure his little girl's happiness, and he knew without a doubt that John would love and protect her for the rest of their lives. The once silent hero had found his voice and his place in the world at last.